The nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. <laughs> Do you know who said that? President Ronald Reagan. Well, I am from the government. I lead a team of weapons innovators at the Air Force Research Lab, New Mexico, where I've worked for over 17 years. Prior to that, I spent six years on active duty, and I love our country. I married a patriot. He retired after serving 20 years on active duty, and he still works for the Air Force today. But the real reason why I do what I do is for my two patriotic children. That's Brad on the left and Cody on the right. And while I could talk to you all day long about why I do what I do, the real question is, why am I here at TEDx? I'm here because I need your help. You are perhaps more influential than you realize on how our military engages in conflict. Our morals, values, and ethics affect decisions made by our commanders in the field every day. I want you to be familiar with the technologies we're developing for them so that you can support them in the decisions that they have to make. I mentioned that I lead a team of weapons innovators. We make directed energy systems useful for national defense. But wait, what's directed energy? You probably recall that when I hold this pen in the air, I give it potential energy. And you can't see it, but there's an X up here. I've even got a target. When I drop it, it has kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is what weapons have used for literally hundreds of thousands of years. Spears and rocks have evolved into bullets, bombs, and ballistic and cruise missiles, but they all use that same basic kinetic technology. Directed energy harnesses energy from across the electromagnetic spectrum and focuses it into a useful beam. Lasers are directed energy systems. Lasers, like the pointer in my hand, are useful for bringing your attention to the awesome artwork behind us. I feel like someone's staring at me. <laughs> they, uh, astronomers use pointers just like this one to point out constellations in the night sky. Heck, some of you probably find directed energy useful for entertaining your pets. <laughs> Lasers are so cool. They are the stuff of Star Trek and Star Wars, and I'm guessing you're probably pretty comfortable with this technology. And while it's a large part of what we do at Air Force Research Lab, it's not what I work on. The team I lead develops high-power microwave weapons. Yeah. I don't mean that we're trying to figure out better ways of throwing ovens out of aircraft doors, because that's back to kinetic. <laughs> we investigate different frequencies on various items. And microwaves, particularly, are defined as frequencies with wavelengths ranging all the way from one meter down to one millimeter. And there are different effects on different things, but today I'm going to focus on just one, and that's the counter-electronic effect. You know that microwaves are fairly good at transferring energy into water-based things, like your food, over time. What you may not realize is that in thousandths of a second, those same microwaves are extremely good at disabling, disrupting, and if conditions are right, even destroying electronic circuits. All of this in half the time it takes you to blink your eyes. That super short time span is insufficient to affect a person, but it's more than enough time to affect electronics. I'm from a lab, and we love experiments. So here's an experiment for you. Go home, put a cup of water or your leftovers from last night in your microwave for one second you'll find that one second is insufficient time to affect that item, just as it's insufficient time to affect a person. Now, if you really don't like your cell phone, <laughs> maybe you're in the market for a new microwave,
turn your cell phone on and put it in your microwave for one second. <laughs> I really do not recommend you do this. But if you did, you would probably see your cell phone reset itself. You might have to pull it out and do a hard restart on it. It is extremely likely that you will never use that phone to connect to another Wi-Fi network ever again. That's the power of microwaves against electronics. As our world has evolved, electronics have become pivotal tools, and our adversaries are just as crippled when their computers or cell phones go down as you are. When you're in an airport, your flight's been delayed, you're frantically trying to make other arrangements, and your smartphone dies. But here's why this technology is really so important. On the 3rd of October of 2015, the US Air Force was tasked with disabling a command and control headquarters belonging to the Taliban over in Afghanistan. Through a series of terribly unfortunate decisions, they identified this building as that headquarters. And three days later, this is what it looked like. The facility was actually a Doctors Without Borders hospital. And 42 people are reported to have been injured or killed in that attack. But the team I lead is developing options. Allow me to share with you a video of a counter-electronic system in action. We call it CHAMP. And while the video you're going to see is sort of cartoonish, I assure you the system is very real. We developed it between a partnership of the Air Force Research Lab New Mexico, Sandia National Labs, Boeing, and Raytheon. And in 2012, we flew it over targets at the Utah Test and Training Range. The system worked exactly as we predicted it would. So in this video, you'll see that the Air Force has once again been tasked with disabling a command and control center. And this time, we've added a chemical and biological weapons production plant, both located in a city we choose to use a CHAMP-like weapon. You see a bomber fly in and drops off the cruise missile, which houses that high-power microwave system. The missile flies over the city and targets the command and control center, leaving it black, passes the hospital, and engages that weapons production plant. As the system flies off, the people are left to wonder, why have my communication stopped? Why do my commu uh, computers stop working? How come I'm not producing my weapons? All of this without leaving a single smoking hole, without harming a single person. Stop our adversaries without harming a soul. Why aren't we using this? Well, there are a lot of challenges to adopting new technologies. I mean, let's face it, change is hard, right? Some of these systems can be kind of pricey, but we are working on ways to make them more affordable. A particular challenge for microwave weapons is, was it effective? I mean, when you leave a building in rubble, it's pretty easy to know that whatever was going on before in that building is probably not going on now. But when you do no damage, how can you tell? We're working on solutions to that too, and we will solve those problems. The problem that only you can solve is whether or not using these systems aligns with our morals, values, and ethics as a culture. Only you can decide. But I want you to know that these systems are designed to maximize damage to the way our adversaries go about harming us and minimize damage to their person. I know that the morals, values, and ethics problem is real. Because in the early 2000s, my organization developed a different technology. We called it active denial. And we chose a millimeter wave frequency because we want you to feel it. That system, the signal penetrates your skin to the depth of about three sheets of paper thick, no deeper. And it causes you to feel hot. The intent is to get people's attention and have them stop doing whatever it is they're doing. So I've got another experiment for you. Make a pizza. When you've preheated your oven to 450 or 500 degrees and you go to pop that sucker in, 
You open up your oven door and that wave of heat comes out and hits you in the face. Instinctively, you close your eyes and turn your head and the feeling passes. Well, you've just basically felt the act of denial beam. I know, because I've been hit by it. It is uncomfortable when you are in the beam. But then sensation stops as soon as you step out. Unfortunately, we have done an insufficient job of educating the public about that technology. And misperceptions about it have so far created an environment that has discouraged our commanders from choosing to use that technology operationally. But I ask you to think about whether or not it's more aligned with our morals to shoot guns at a car that's perhaps erratically approaching an entry control point, or is it more aligned with our values to make that driver so uncomfortable that they're no longer interested in heading toward that gate? Is it more moral to us to shoot bullets at protesters on our borders who are throwing rocks at our border patrol agents? Or maybe would active denial be a choice that's more aligned with our values? Only you can decide. But let's not allow active denial's fate to happen with our high-power microwave counter-electronic systems. Had the commander in Afghanistan had the choice to use a high-power microwave system, and had they still mistakenly identified that hospital as their target, three days later, the facility would have looked like this. And I guarantee you, 42 people would not have been injured or killed. President John Kennedy said, I look forward to a great future for America, a future in which our country matches its military strength with our moral restraint, its wealth with our wisdom, its power with our purpose. I'm from the government, and I need your help. Use your power to create for our children the future to which President Kennedy and we all aspire. <laughs>